Hey Ferret fam, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. Today we are going to be talking about supplements, the good, the bad, do your ferrets even need them? Can they contribute to long-term health? Are they just gimmicks? And don't worry, if you don't feed raw, you can still benefit from the contents of this video. So keep on watching to find out. But first, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, consider becoming a member of the channel, and also joining our ferret advocacy group, the Ferret Freedom Fighters. Links will be below. If you're new here, hi, my name is Bryn. I I am a pet care, ferret care content creator here on YouTube with a focus in nutrition, holistic care, maintenance, raising of animals, along with my 15 years of general experience in animal care. And as always, my sources for this video will be linked in the description. So for the purpose of quality and depth in this video, I'm not going to be just talking about powdered and liquid supplements that you can add to foods, but I will also be talking about whole food additions that you can add to their diet to make it more nutritionally adequate. So the main purpose of supplements is to plug any possible nutritional gaps in the diet, but they can also be used to help treat specific conditions. First, I'm going to talk about the supplements I personally use, the ones that I don't use and why, along with actually examining the specific ferret supplements that are out there on the market right now. The first supplement that we are going to be talking about today is bone broth, and bone broth is a great addition for both raw fed ferrets and kibble fed ferrets. The best kind of bone broth is homemade, and so I'm going to link my recipe recipe for my safe bone broth for ferrets in the description of the video. Bone broth has many benefits, the first being it's an excellent joint supplement in addition to their normal diet. It is loaded in glycosaminoglycans such as glucosamine along with chondroitin and hyaluronic acid. These are all common ingredients that you might find in joint health supplements along with anti-aging products. Absorbed in their intact form acting like hormones stimulating the fibroblasts in the cells also promotes healthy gut. The gut microbiome, also called the forgotten organ, plays a large role in the immune system of the ferret. If the gut isn't healthy, the ferret won't be healthy, and it's the same for humans. Bone broth does this by providing glycine, helping to regulate bile salt synthesis along with gastric acid secretion. Birds are very sensitive animals, so this is a very good addition into their diet to help soothe their tummies and digestive tract. Good for sick and older ferrets, for those that are refusing their food because they're sick or they're getting older, it helps to add nutrients into the diet if they are refusing that normal solid or wet food. So contains apple cider vinegar in this particular recipe. This fermented apple juice has been used for many, many years to help aid in digestion, skin issues, pretty much anything. It's naturally acidic, balancing the stomach pH and preventing things like bloating and gas. I feed a few splashes of my homemade broth pretty much every single day. And I go through one eight ounce container over five days because that's how good it usually stays long in the fridge. And then I will grab a frozen one and thaw that and then feed that for five days. If you feed dry food, bone broth can be used instead of water to help keep it hydrated. Along with if you feed freeze dried raw foods, you can actually use it to rehydrate the freeze dried raw. Number two, free range eggs, another affordable supplement for ferrets on any diet. Eggs are a nutrient powerhouse, practically a complete food source, containing protein, folate, B12, vitamin A, and so much more. The lining of the shell, called the membrane, is also used in many joint supplements. The quality of eggs does affect the nutrients it provides, so make sure to get free range or organic when possible. A common misconception I hear about feeding raw eggs to ferrets is that you can only feed the egg yolks. If you feed the egg whites, it will lead to biotin deficiency in your ferret. And I'm here to tell you that in reality, if the entire egg is fed and eggs are kept at a maximum of one to two per week, biotin deficiency is not gonna happen. First reason being ferrets in the wild eat the entire egg no matter what. And then secondly, biotin deficiencies are actually very, very rare. It would require a large amount of eggs. And if you're feeding raw, they have plenty of other sources of biotin in the diet naturally. You can do cooked eggs if for some reason you don't feel comfortable doing raw eggs, but they won't be as nutritious for your ferret, but it is still a good option, better than nothing. Also work to actually 
actively prevent hairballs and ferrets. Here to feed eggs in a separate dish because it does spoil food a lot quicker. Number three, green tripe. This is one of my favorite supplements to feed. And if you feed dry food, you can still do green tripe in a dehydrated or freeze dried raw form. Tripe has been one of those foods that people have avoided originally because ferrets don't like the smell. They're not gonna eat it. When in reality, if you actually try it, a lot of ferrets love tripe. I feed tripe blended into their organ meals in the week, usually once a week. Tripe is found in the stomachs of grazing animals, not to be confused with the white bleached tripe that you might find at your supermarket. Tripe provides various enzymes, vitamins, minerals, probiotic benefits. It also has a very balanced calcium to phosphorus ratio, an acidic pH, as well as a healthy balance of linoleic and linolenic acid. Again, ferrets have sensitive digestive systems, so any form of enzymes in an appropriate form is generally a great addition for them. Even better is partially digested enzymes like what is found in tripe. Number four is shellfish, another one for raw feeders. However, if you do feed dry food, you can certainly find freeze-dried raw mussels out there. Oysters also provide healthy EPA and DHA along with zinc and copper. They should be cooked prior to feeding or you could do canned oysters in water, but keep in mind that the sodium contents of that is much higher. Green and blue lip mussels are also a popular choice when adding trace minerals into the diet. Mussels sold on the half shell or no shell have already been pre-steamed prior to you feeding them, but mussels that are in the full shell, the whole shell, will need to be steamed prior to feeding. Mussels are actually a well-studied joint supplement aid. I feed them once a week in their organ meals, usually one mussel for five ferrets or two very small ones. Number five, another one of my favorite supplements to feed, and that is fish. There are two types of polyunsaturated fatty acids that can be added into a raw diet, omega-6 and omega-3. Need a balance of both omega-6 and omega-3, or else disease can occur when balance is not met. If you're feeding a lot of grocery store meats, factory farmed meats, the diet will be much higher in omega-6. can cause inflammation in the body. Also inactive and active fatty acids. Inactive fatty acids need to actually be converted by the body into the active form. And the active form is all set and ready to go. And that is the type of fatty acids that we need for ferrets and cats, the active versions of fatty acids. All meat Meats and eggs contain more than enough omega-6, so you will very rarely need to actually supplement omega-6 into the diet. Omega-3 is going to be lacking, so what most people do is they feed a fish oil. And you guys probably already know my stance on fish oils. Most of them are unknown. They have oxidized long before they get to you. Feeding rancid fish oils is much more dangerous to the body and can just wreak havoc. Instead, safe raw fish can be fed weekly. I have a whole blog post down below on this topic, but make sure that the fish is low in mercury and toxins. Make sure it's wild caught, sustainably sourced. I feed fish once a week, maybe one to two ounces for five ferrets into their organ soups usually, or a muscle meat meal, because fish is considered part of the meat portion of the diet. Even though it does contain small bones and organs, it is a very insignificant amount and shouldn't contribute to the organs or the bone percentage in the diet. Tanji. Sorry, Tanji is playing with a little jingly ball in the rice pit. Okay guys, the prince has arrived. He's here to talk about supplements today. What is your favorite supplement? <gasps> the heck was that? Make sure to freeze your fish for at least two to three weeks prior to feeding it. And because of its benefits and purpose in the raw diet to provide those omega-3 fatty acids, I consider it more to be an essential component of the raw diet, and that is a common opinion amongst raw feeders. More than just being a supplement, it is an essential component. Number six, medicinal mushrooms. This is a fun one. So medicinal mushrooms have proven benefits in humans and animals and has been studied for many years. We have hundreds and hundreds of studies on medicinal mushrooms in both humans and animals. They provide valuable beta-glucans and acts as a prebiotic, which is food for the beneficial bacteria, the probiotics in the body. For obligate carnivores, safe prebiotics are very hard to come by. Usually they come in the form of vegetables, fruits, and fibers, all generally indigestible and not species appropriate for an obligate carnivore. So medicinal mushrooms have prebiotics that are more species appropriate. So in summary, medicinal mushrooms helps to activate the microbiome by acting as an immunomodulatory agent, biologically valuable polysaccharides, and phenolic 
compounds, prevent cancer, slows tumor growth, helps manage diabetes, helps aid in various organ functions. So make sure that the mushroom supplement that you use is whole mushroom. Use the whole fruiting body of the mushroom. Many of them are mycelium, which is only part of the mushroom and often grown on grains, increasing the starch content of the mushroom and lowering the beta-glucan content. Extract complex powders are the most popular option. I do a pinch of the powder in their organ soups weekly. Your holistic vet can give you a more specific dosing if you are using it to treat conditions such as mast cell tumors or whatever you're using it for. Do not go out and feed wild mushrooms. These are toxic for your pets and totally different from medicinal mushrooms. And yes, I know some of you are thinking, but Bryn, how are mushrooms species appropriate? Mushrooms are a fungus, not a vegetable or a fruit. And while they probably wouldn't eat them in the wild because so many of them are so toxic to them, this doesn't mean that they cannot benefit. I mean, when you look at other non-species appropriate things like beef or lamb or pork, these are meats that a ferret would either never or very rarely come across in the wild, but that doesn't mean that they cannot benefit from them. This is a rule that can be applied to animal products, fish, and fungus as well. It cannot be applied to vegetables, fruits, or grains because we have no studies, no evidence that supports the benefits of those for obligate carnivores, but we do have it for medicinal mushrooms and animal products. So I hope that that makes sense because I often use the word not species appropriate or species appropriate and when you look at it it kind of doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because they wouldn't meet a cow in the wild and eat it but um, again it all boils down to what evidence do we have what research do we have that supports the benefits of said item now i'm going to discuss some supplements i don't feed and why now please do keep in mind just because i wouldn't do it doesn't mean that you shouldn't i mean there are some things on this list that i highly highly suggest that you don't feed to your ferrets, but you know, every ferret is different. Um, if you've done your research and you really wanna feed something, I mean, that's totally on you, but this is just my personal opinion. So the number one supplement that I see a lot for ferrets, um, aside from fish oils, which we've already glossed over, is pumpkin. I've seen this used for ferrets a lot, usually used to soothe the digestive tract and help push blockages through. I will never feed this, nor will I ever recommend it to you guys, because number one, Eggs, raw eggs, do a much better job at actually preventing hairballs, helping with blockages, and soothing the tummy. And it's also nearly a complete food source because it's packed with all those nutrients when pumpkin does not have those benefits for the ferret. And again, eggs are species appropriate and biologically available, meaning ferrets can actually prove and benefit from the nutrients in eggs when pumpkin is the opposite. It is not biologically available as far as we know, and it's not species appropriate. Pumpkin is also mostly a carbohydrate and I consider it to be a band-aid solution. If your ferrets are continuously having hairball issues, maybe you're not feeding enough eggs or maybe they are having like a real digestive problem and you keep putting this band-aid over it, oh just I'll just feed him pumpkin you know every day to help with his tummy, um, you're just covering up an issue that does need addressing like IBD. And then lastly, of course, sugar is obviously linked to many issues in both ferrets and humans. So you're gonna wanna avoid it whenever you can. Number two, kelp. Kelp is a popular supplement in the dog and cat raw feeding communities. Kelp is a sea vegetable and is used as a multivitamin and to provide trace minerals such as iodine. Iodine content varies widely based on the supplement that you choose, so no base dose can actually be given. So the first issue with kelp and why I don't feed it is because iodine is so easy to overfeed and iodine is found in a large concentration in these sea vegetables. It can also be grown in polluted waters and contain heavy metals and toxins. And because of that, the quality of the supplement varies widely. And in my opinion, should only be fed if prescribed by a holistic vet because your pet needs an increased amount of iodine. Iodine can be found in lesser amounts in whole protein animals, a fish, and shellfish. Number three is a controversial one, and that is goat's milk. Goat's milk is used over, you know, regular cow's milk because it's considered to be more digestible. Apparently, people who are lactose intolerant, along with animals such as ferrets, will have a better time digesting this kind of milk over other animal milks. Though, dairy is not species appropriate, especially for ferrets, which means dairy products will undoubtedly cause digestive upset, 
diarrhea in ferrets. They are just such little, tiny, sensitive animals in comparison to a dog or a cat that might have a better time. They are more sensitive than even a cat, which says a lot because cats, as we know, are very sensitive animals as well. So you wanna be careful and just avoid dairy whenever you can. While they do provide a lot of probiotic benefits, it's not exactly proven to be biologically available for ferrets at this time. And you can get probiotics in other foods such as a green tripe. Number four, nutritional yeast. My vegans out there will understand what this is. Usually used to add flavor and a cheesy texture and taste in vegan foods. It can also be fed to animals. It is used as a vitamin complex to increase palatability of animal foods as well. Though too much can cause diarrhea in an animal. And I just don't really see the benefits of using a B complex supplement because they provide a lot of vitamin B. Um, why you would do that if you're already feeding quality organ meats in the diet, which you should be anyways. So I don't really see the purpose of this supplement being added to a ferret's diet. Number five, psyllium husk. This is used as a fiber supplement, generally fed if whole prey fur and feathers are not being fed in the diet and is usually prescribed to cats actually to help with constipation. Added fiber supplements are not really recommended for such a small animal and such a sensitive animal like a ferret. It tends to really, really wreak havoc in their digestive system and cause explosive diarrhea and more so I definitely would not recommend adding this to your ferrets diet generally don't need help in the constipation department six powdered taurine I've seen this recommended a couple times here on YouTube and the issue with this is if you are feeding 10% heart meat in the raw diet like you should be you don't need powdered taurine supplements taurine can also be found in just the meats and the bones everything else in the diet so um, it is provided in large amounts in heart meat, but it can also be found in salmon fillets, beef tongue, turkey meat. Um, taurine is found in most animal products, it's just highest in those foods. So as long as you're providing that, you will be providing enough taurine for your ferrets. Number seven, olive oil has been used in ferrets to help prevent hairball production, but it's not really effective, nor is it species appropriate. Raw eggs do a much better job and act more as a food source of a bunch of different nutrients, so might as well just feed the eggs and not to mention that added oils such as olive oil or coconut oil can cause tummy upset and diarrhea in ferrets so coconut oil also falls under this category number eight vitamin e this is also kind of controversial because the cat and the dog community really love their vitamin e so i'm not going to touch on it too much but for ferrets because they are a different species and they are more sensitive Vitamin E supplements aren't really required. Vitamin E is also not easily absorbed in the body and only half of it can actually be utilized from their food. Grass-fed meats have like four times the amount of vitamin E than grain-fed animals, which is one of the reasons why I suggest getting grass-fed, grass-finished, free-range meats whenever you can. Vitamin E can also be found in fish, eggs, organ meats. Number nine, I have calcium and I actually have an example with me right here this is a popular supplement for ferrets generally used during the transition to raw so that we can make sure that they are getting their calcium and their phosphorus that they need. Bone meal is fine for short term feeding along with crushed eggshell powder if you don't want to get bone meal even though bone meal is more complete than eggshells are. They do not make a good substitution for raw meaty bones long term. Raw meaty bones make up the bulk of the raw diet. They are without a doubt the most important element in a raw diet. They contain nearly every nutrient that a ferret needs to live. Practically a complete food source. When this is lacking in the diet, many issues can occur. Powdered calcium also isn't really biologically proven, biologically available either. So that's why this should only be used during the transition to raw or if your ferrets get sick and they can only eat soups and add it to the soups to help with the calcium and phosphorus. So when you Google ferret supplement, many different products come up. I'm not gonna touch on the market like ferret bite and stuff because I've already gone over those in much detail in many other videos. I will link at the top of the screen if you are curious to learn about those. In summary, don't feed any marshals or 
Bayfar, I think it's called those vitamin paste, vitamin supplements. They are not good for them at all. It's pretty much cancer in a bottle or a bag. Two that I will be looking at today is the Nupro Ferret Supplement and the Wise Song Omega-3 Supplement Complex. So the Nupro All Natural Ferret Supplement contains kelp, flaxseed, yeast, bee pollen, garlic, calcium citrate, lecithin, and a probiotic. Not exactly awful, but not exactly needed either. Yes, before you ask, garlic is toxic to dogs and cats in high doses, though many use it in small doses for cats and dogs with success. There aren't many sources that talk about garlic for ferrets, so I would be very, very hesitant to feed a garlic supplement, especially daily for ferrets, and you don't really know the amount of garlic that is used in this powder, so you gotta be really careful with it. The benefits from all of these ingredients that they could potentially get would be found in a normal, nutritionally adequate raw diet plan, along with even most dry foods with the synthetic premixes that they have in the food. It is meant to provide all those nutrients, whether it's actually biologically available or not, much better than your average Marshall supplement though. Next one is the Y Song Fair Omega-3 Spectrum. This contains flaxseed, algae oil, fish oil, enzymatic digest of liver, citric acid, vitamin E, and rosemary extract. My biggest thing with this is the unknown oils, the unknown algae oil, we don't know what algae is used for it, and the unknown fish oil, we don't know what fish is used for this oil. So obviously not a fan of a rosemary extract, I've talked about that one a couple times. I also don't really know what enzymatic digest of liver is though of course still better than Marshall's supplements all right you guys that is all that I have for you today hope you learned a thing or two do not forget to hit that subscribe button consider becoming a member I have a bunch of new members on the channel so super excited about that I hope to see you guys on the ferret freedom fighters Instagram page and I will see you in my next video bye guys